Well, I haven't done one of these interviews since January 2022, which is, I can't believe, here it is and we're in June already. But back, last time we did an interview like this, I'd just been robbed blind for my builder from trusting someone in Thailand that ran off with all my money and I had to get the government involved. I wasn't seeing light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, I was t finally opening up about my heart problems and I had to fly back to New Zealand for open heart surgery. Well, let's fast forward a bit of time. I'm sitting here on, at Palace Number no. 1, Pucks Palace, the foundation, the first palace I, I built about three and a half years ago now, which is crazy to think, after the Nicaraguan Revolution, I came over here. But let's go back in time. January, I ended up getting through that problem. I brought the lawyers involved. We got the lawyers back on site. I had to accept a few losses, a few defeats to get to the main goal, which was opening Pucks Palace Thailand. We got those guys back on site. Uh, they did the majority of the work that was owed. And I brought another team in, as if you followed the, the YouTube journey, you would have seen the opening party, and it was uh, the biggest milestone um, of my life uh, so far, opening Pax Palace Thailand right on the island of Koh Phangan, if you haven't been there yet. Uh, we had the opening party, and since then, it's been a huge success. We've been selling out for two full moons now. It's a 180 bed palace right on our own beach in Koh Phangan, in Thailand. It's the most sought after place in Thailand, but that's not why we're sitting here. I got through that problem. As I keep saying, if it was easy, everyone would do it, and if you keep moving forward, you finally find light at the end of the tunnel. So I had the opening party, I flew back to New Zealand, I went straight into the, my heart specialist to get my heart test, and um, I sort of was pulling my hair out watching paint dry in New Zealand, bored shitless, all my friends are a little bit on different wavelength in life, they've got their house and their kids and especially coming into New Zealand winter, the phone didn't ring like it used to um, and I thought it's always a two way relationship as I've been away, you know, I was always calling people to catch up and try to keep in touch but you know, um, relationships are both work both ways. So when I was home it was more just family time, uh, love seeing the parents, flew down to uh, see my sister in Wellington who's um, a physio and it was um, yeah, awesome to see her and I, would, I, had, I was just spending quality time with whoever uh, would make the effort for me and I was pulling my hair out because New Zealand, each time I go home it, it just cements the desire of why I want to be away and what I'm doing is right because um, a 9 to 5 job wasn't for me, a 45 year mortgage wasn't for me, I didn't really fit into the normality of home and what I've been creating around the world is actually becoming more and more special and each time I go home it shows that. My family wants to come see me around the world and see what I create rather than me go home and get bored. But I sat there for a month pulling my hair out, waiting for my heart um, results. Uh, there used to be a threshold and it was rated out of 50 and it was my last test at last year was 49 and, uh, and it, if it hit 50, I had to have open heart surgery. So when I went home, uh, we had the tests, and they said the threshold had changed to 55. So that was how they measured it. So from 40, she said from 49 to 55 in one year, if it changed, um, that's very unlikely, and it's unlikely I need open heart surgery, which I had planned for. I wanted to have both Pucks Palaces running and open, and I could have six months off, uh, have my open heart surgery, have recovery, get a new lease on life and uh, I looked at it as a new heart, so a virgin heart so I can go test it around the world and see how wild and how much damage I can do to the new one. But I sat there and I finally got the call as I was bored shitless and the doc goes, guess what, the results came back good, you're good for another two years before you need to get your next um, echo, um, go have fun around the world. So I set off on my adventure. You're going to see, we haven't done vlogs lately, the vlogs are going to update you from my travel from New Zealand to here, but we're talking today about the problems I'm going through. While I was bored in this pandemic, I, I had nothing to do, and I had all this OnlyFans money, all the legends that were su subscribing for the true foundations of the palace, between the steel and the concrete and the gummy bears, that's what was still putting the roof over my palace's uh, head, and both, both roof over both palaces were still paid my paid platforms for the subscribers of you legends who subscribed and paid. Kept afloat, kept my family's uh, roofs over their head and I've kept my staff employed. But it's just been this abandoned basically palace. For the last two years this has been closed. 
looking absolutely amazing because I re renovated it during the pandemic, but I didn't have the permits and I wasn't ready like uh, to pay for the permits until the world was sort of back on and people were traveling to Nicaragua. So they started to travel to, back to Nicaragua. It's busy, tourism's pumping again. Actually, as we speak today, you don't even need a PR, PCR test to get into the country. So that's like one step closer. And actually in Thailand, even though uh, Thailand, you don't even need a Thailand pass. You don't need to have quarantine. So both where palaces are, we're ready to succeed. But this is where the invers adversity comes in and the hurdles in life where maybe a normal man would walk away. I'm coming back to all these problems. And it comes, comes down to trust. Who you trust and who you bring into these businesses, um, especially in another language. I dealt with this in Thailand and now I'm coming back to the adversity here. Doing it in Spanish and doing it in Thai, the lessons actually haven't helped me at all. I've still ended up getting fucked in the ass and, and truly getting fucked over and lost a lot of money over it. So the problem I'm sitting here, here I, I got done over by my builder in Thailand. Well, I'm sitting here today, like I could, I've gone past the tears and I've gone past, the, like we're almost 75% over the, to the solution. Like, We've brought, we're doing this interview now, not at the start of me getting back, which is a week ago. We're already a week back in San Juan and I'm a week into handling these problems and we're almost there. But my accountant, who was part of my staff, over the last two and a half years, it was easy as telling the government um, that we were closed. But basically, he never did that and we've been open this whole time, but we've actually been I kept my staff on because that's a good faith and I wanted to look after them in this time. But to the government, we've been open. So to get all my new permits and be official and go on hostile world, I had to pay each institution of the government back for the last few years. So basically what my accountant was doing to me for this last two and a half years was basically sending me like an Excel sheet saying he's doing all the work, but really he was just clipping the ticket, taking his fee, and keeping the money and fucking me royally over. So it wasn't as easy as me getting back, going to each institution, getting all the different permits so I can be legal here in Nicaragua. It was, I had to go to each institution and pay back the back taxes for the last two and a half years because they thought I was open. I have a truck out there that hasn't moved in two years. The worst purchase in my life. Like I fixed it once, five grand. And then the, a week later, the motor fell out, just exactly what I fixed. That's not the main problem of the adversity here. One of the taxes here in uh, Nicaragua, I had to um, pay for the vehicle just to sit there because they thought it was operating a, a, as a tourism vehicle and taking tourists around. But really, it just sat in the driveway for two years. That was just one of my problems. So to go back and be legal here, we had to go through all the, the different institutions and realize for the last Two and a half years, my accountant has just royally fucked me over. We're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. And when I've just put all my life savings into Thailand, and it's actually a dream come true. And right now, full moon was just last week, we were sold out again. And apparently it's all just girls staying there. Cause I made it a bougie palace. There's girls all running around for full moon and beautiful bikinis and it's a dream come true. And it's sort of, I've come back to this problem. So I'm waking up and I want to be at my other palace. But that was never the dream. This is, my heart has always been in Nicaragua as the foundation. This was number one. But coming back, it's like starting at square one. And I've just been done over again. Not from the builder, but from the accountant. So I'm in a situation, I'm already a week into the problem. And it's just, I'm having to pay all these back taxes and do clear roofing up for the last two and a half years. We actually, if the accountant had just um, done his job two years ago, up to date and then told the government we were closed like it was for the last two years like this whole pandemic it would be easy to go down get the stamp permit open hostel world have a sold out 70 bed resort here in the beautiful san juan nicaragua but no i'm dealing with it's just coming back to this adversity and it's coming i've always called me as a um a olympic hurdle jumper of problems in my life and it's just more hurdles to get over it and the gist of coming back to San Juan and, you know, I've almost catfished myself, you know, I'm promoting my, how beautiful the palace is on the way down and walking in and the pool was green and uh, it was looking a little bit run down um, compared to how I left it. I left it eight months ago. 
my, I left, I, I had opportunity, and you have to swoop in on these opportunities. I got the call um, that the Pax Palace Thailand was there, available to buy. I called Shane, my business partner there, and I said, give me a week. Called him back a week later. I said, the palace is ours. And I just renovated this. It was brand new. Tourism wasn't here yet. I go, I've got time. I'll let it be. I can afford it. So I let it be for 10 months. Went and you saw the dream. Went through so much troubles there ups and downs and got light to the end of the tunnel and then this dream come true went home for the heart surgery didn't need it another big step another big positive in the life of puck and then coming back here just ready to have a holiday holiday at the first palace they created walk into my green pool sort of a half run down palace once again and then not even realizing that it wasn't just easy to cook, get the stamps of the, the permits um, you guys thought we've been open this whole time. Literally, I've had, just had an abandoned palace for a couple of good mates to come and enjoy uh, in this pandemic because I wanted people to hear, see what I've done and at least someone was enjoying it. But we haven't been official. This town is selling out. No one even knows other than if you follow me on Pucks Palace, Nicaragua, um, that we were open. Some kids down at Sam, uh, Sunday Funday, they were like, we came all this way to, to see the palace, but you're closed. I'm like, we've never been closed. We just haven't been able to be officially online. So I walked back in, there's been some highlights. One of my best buds is actually behind the camera. I uh, haven't seen in eight years. Um, hadn't seen him since Tomorrowland when me and Johnny Danger ran wild and, um, and he climbed the stage, if you can remember, when me and him were both setting off on our journey. Old Gordy um, was there. He didn't actually like me at Tomorrowland. It was a bit of a cunt back then, the young puck. But as I'm saying, we all mature and grow into these new people. Um, he's been here and it sort of brought some life back into me and San Juan because it had been so long, usually I'm at the, the palace, I just kick back, I've got mama's cooking and uh, I just enjoy the beautiful place. So I've had some good people around me and there's a couple of Aussie legends here and it's basically we don't have guests, it's just mates staying. So now it's time, I need the palace to pay the bills and I need to get bums on bed. So I thought it would be easy but we just finished the last meeting um, so I said we're 80, 75 to 85, 75% to 80% solved the solution. Um, it just, I was, didn't realize I wasn't coming for a holiday. I was, I mean, didn't realize I was coming into all these problems from just one person, one accountant. So it's just about, if you're going to take any lessons away from this, it's just like, just be careful who you bring in and who you trust. Even in Thailand, my middleman was clipping the ticket on me there, like, you know, good faith gets you nowhere in life. When you feel you're doing so much for some people, you know, you could be really just getting fucked over. So keep your circles, I'm not even saying keep your circles close, small, just be a little bit more aware of when you feel like, cause you're a good person, doesn't mean other people are good people around you. So, so pick your friends and pick the people you go into business with. So we've got all this fucking receipts and paperwork in front of me. As I said, by next Wednesday, I'm only here two weeks. It depends. My best mate, Ben Bodica, his team cast is in the semi-final. Um, if they win, I'm flying to Paris on, Friday, um, on Thursday. If they don't win, I'm flying to a stag do on Sunday in, Sta in Spain. A stag do me and him have only dreamed about. I'm still a bit upset I wasn't the one organised it, you know, but that's who, um, problems for another time. But uh, I've, I've been here a week. I've been on the, on the last for a week, but that's the thing about one of my talents in life. I can get shit done while I'm sort of um, balls deep in the bender. So yeah, just the accountant did me a duty, but I got through the tide, the builder fucking me in Thailand. I'm going to get through this adversity here, but I just wanted to be honest. We, I haven't been open for two, two years. This pandemic's been about two and a half years. I got this place three and a half years ago. We were only ever open eight months. This is... I renovated it out of my own money, OnlyFans money, all the, just, all you can't subscribing. This is what paid for making it look as beautiful as it is, but it's just sat here on their own. Do you think I've been making money from this place for that? No, it's just been out of pocket. So I want bums on beds. I want you guys to start traveling again. Nicaragua is the place to be. The surf is up and tourism is here. So once, by next Wednesday and this two weeks, my only two week cameo here in Nicaragua, I would have solved all this adversity and we'll be official and we're ready to host the masses. Heart's good and to be fair I've tested this heart in this last week like it's a new one and I'm feeling as, you know, I might not look fresh, I've never been fresh for years but 
I'm still good and I'm ready to go. So uh, stay tuned and Pax Palace, Nicaragua, by the time you watch this video, will be ready, official, open on Hostel World. So much love, that's a bit of an update and then the vlogs are kicking off a week later all the way from New Zealand to here. So much love from me. Up the fucking place.